right? If you look at what happens, so this is the equation of a plane, z equals constant times x plus constant times y plus constant, and if you look at what happens if I hold y constant and vary x, I recover the first line. If I hold x constant and vary y, I get the second line. Okay, another way to do it, of course, would be to write actually parametric equations of these lines, get vectors along them, and then take the cross product to get the normal vector to the plane, and then get this equation for the plane using the normal vector. That also works, and it gives you the same formula. So, you know, if you're curious, exercise, do it again using parametrics and using cross product to get the plane equation. Okay, so that's how we get the tangent plane. And now what this approximation formula here says is that, in fact, the graph of the function is close to the tangent plane. Okay, if we were moving on the tangent plane, this would be an actual equality. Delta z would be a linear function of delta x and delta y. And the graph of the function is near the tangent plane, but it's not quite the same, so it's only an approximation for small delta x and small delta y. So the approximation formula says the graph of f is close to its tangent plane. Okay? And we can use that formula over here now to estimate how the value of f changes if I change x and y at the same time. Okay, questions about that? Okay, so now that we've caught up with what we were supposed to see on Tuesday, I can tell you now about max and min problems. So, That's going to be an application of partial derivatives. To look at optimization problems. Okay, so maybe you know, 10 years from now, when you have a real job, your job might be to actually minimize the cost of something or maximize the profit of something or um, whatever. But typically, the function that you will have to, you know, strive to minimize or maximize will depend on several variables. So if you have a function of one variable, um, you know that to find its minimum or its maximum, you look at the derivative and you set that equal to zero and you try to then look at what happens to the function. So here it's going to be kind of similar, except, of course, we have several derivatives. Okay, so for today we'll think about a function of two variables, but it works exactly the same if you have three variables, ten variables, a million variables. So, the first observation is that, so if we have a local minimum or a local maximum, then both partial derivative, so, so partial f, partial x, and partial f, partial y, are both zero at the same time. So, why is that? Well, let's say that f sub x is zero, that means when I vary x, well, to first order, the function doesn't change. Maybe that's because it's going through. So if I look only at the slice parallel to the x-axis, then maybe I'm going through the minimum. But then, if partial f, partial y is not zero, then actually by changing y, I could still make the value larger or smaller. So that wouldn't be an actual maximum or minimum. It would only be... Uh, maximum or minimum if I stay in the slice. But if I allow myself to change y, that doesn't work. So I need actually to know that if I change y, the value will not change either to first order. So that's why I also need partial f, partial y to be zero. 
Now, let's say that they are both zero. Well, why is that enough? It's essentially enough because of this formula telling me that if both of these guys are zero, then to first order the function doesn't change. And then, of course, there will be maybe quadratic terms that will actually turn that, you know, this won't really say that your function is actually constant. It will just tell you that maybe uh, it will be actually quadratic or higher order in delta x and delta y. And that's what you expect to have at a maximum or a minimum. Okay? So we have... Okay, so that condition is the same thing as saying that the tangent plane to the graph is actually going to be horizontal. Okay, and that's what you want to have. Say you have a minimum. Well, see that the tangent plane at this point, at the bottom of the graph, is going to be horizontal. Okay. And you can see that on this equation of the tangent plane, when both these coefficients are zero, that's when the equation becomes z equals constant, the horizontal plane. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, so we'll have a name for this kind of point because actually what we'll see very soon is that these conditions are necessary but they're not sufficient. There's actually other kinds of points where the partial derivatives are zero. So let's give a name to this. We say, definition, we say that x, let's say x zero, y zero, is a critical point of f. If the partial derivative with respect to x and the partial derivative with respect to y are both zero. More generally, you would want all the partial derivatives, no matter how many variables you have, you want all the partials to be zero at the same time. Okay. So let's see an example. So let's say I give you the function f of x, y equals x squared minus 2xy plus 3y squared plus 2x minus 2y. 